Hey, what's up everybody? Today we got a Vegas 11 render tutorial specifically for gamers. I have three different file formats we're going to be working with. This is an AVI from Fraps, an AVI from a BMI Shuttle, and then an MP4 from a Halpog PVR. And we're going to go over the idiosyncrasies of each of those and tell you which, which is the best way to work with them in, in that context. So, first thing you want to do is go to Project Properties and go to New and you're going to be setting up a new a new file so what I typically like to do with 1280 height 720 and I, I, let me stop here for a second this is for YouTube and there's really no reason to do anything above 720 on YouTube and it's just that people typically aren't going to be using it you're not going to have a lot of people that are going to download stuff in 1080p and that's just it's the way it is so field order none progressive scan pixel aspect ratio 1.0 square frame rate 59.940 this is double NTSC it's basically 60 frames per second now you don't need to do this if you're on console because most console games don't are don't record at 60 frames per second I have a fraps footage in here that was recorded at 60 frames per second so that's why I have it set up there um, be aware of, of what your game puts out there's some console games that do run at 60 frames per second but just make sure you, you you're not wasting your time running it at, at 60 if you don't need to pixel format 32 bit floating point or floating point full range uh, that's what I use on there 1.0 linear full resolution rendering quality I leave it best your motion blur type is Gaussian and uh, I always leave this unchecked, this adjust source media to better match your project or render settings. Um, I've, never, I've never been seen a discernible difference in what I do, uh, whether I use it or not, so I just leave it off. Now, audio, you can use stereo. Don't use 5.1 surround. It sounds good, but for the most part, your audience is going to be listening on computer speakers and they're not going to have a full 5.1 setup and that's generally speaking for the most of the folks out there there's going to be exceptions to that but that's what it is sample rate I leave at 48 bit depth 24 resample stretch quality is best and since I already have a file open I'm just going to hit cancel here and then that's going to be the end of that so the next thing that we want to take a look at is how you set up your screen uh, this is all a personal preference thing my personal preference is, is I like a big preview window I like my media over here and I like a smaller timeline I know other folks that have you know small windows whatever they do in Vegas 11 just like the previous Vegas instances you were you're completely open to what you want to configure it as which I like and this is this is how I set it up so you drop your media in here and then uh, you know hit it I also uh, configure everything so that when I double click um, something it opens it up in a timeline that's something you can configure in your options preferences and it's all the way down here double click media to load files and trimmer instead of tracks now that's been an option for a long time so those of you who are used to previous versions of Vegas will probably do that um, it, it's been I personally like it I think that it, my workflow is a little better that way but you know it's, it's definitely up to you how you want to run that stuff so once you get your stuff trimmed out and your clips that you want to put in now for the most part this tutorial is specifically guided for people who are not doing montages people that are going to be doing commentaries people that are just going to show gameplay clips stuff like that if you're going to be doing a montage you're going to be doing all kinds of other tricks and transitions and and you know cool 3d work and whatever else you're gonna add in there so this really doesn't apply to you this just applies mainly for everybody else who's not gonna be doing that that level of work so that being said a typical transition what this does if you look at this here and you watch a preview window is it transitions between one into the other and you can see how that that just blended in and out there so make sure you know when you when you go from scene to scene that you just use those transitions now the way you do that is once you got a trimmed file here is you can just slide that in and make sure that you've got these these overlays here and that'll overlay the screen on top of 
the next one. It just gives you a, a really, it's a pretty clean transition. But, you know, again, there's lots of transitions in here, and you can do all kinds of stuff with cool effects. And if you guys got new blue plugins and whatever else, I mean, I'm just talking about a very clean, simple, easy to use tutorial on this. Um, so, next thing you want to do, um, I want to specifically address the, the PVR. Now, the PVR has some issues that the rest of them do not that I've used anyways. Now the issue with the PVR is, and I'm going to see if I can expand this a little more. Now you see these really lame black lines up here and on the side. This is from um, the way the PVR records or what, however it's done, but every single one that I've ever used has had it on there and it's annoying. So there's a way to get rid of this and I'm going to show you a quick way to do this. As you go in here to your let me back up a second there. You go in over here to your track motion. Click that. Now you come into your track motion and in X, enter 2, in Y, enter 1. Now, watch watch your sides up here. You see the black line? You see the black line? Just start going on width and you're going to watch this side over here. Just keep going up a little bit. What you're doing is blowing it up. So you see the black line's gone now? And go up here to height the black line's gone all you did was blow that up a little bit so that the, the you're not seeing as much you're not seeing those black lines and so it gives you a, a much cleaner appearance than um, you would you would get normally so you're not you're not boxing it next thing to do um, I just want to touch briefly on on audio because I see this so much on YouTube and it just drives me nuts check your audio levels Put your audio on separate tracks, first of all. So I got game audio up here, which is off because it was killed in another render. Or actually, yeah. And then down here, we have a decibel setting. Put your computer speakers at a normal level, and then adjust these so that it sounds normal. So it sounds like you would be listening to anybody else's commentary at a normal level. I think people fail to do this a lot, and they end up with super loud intros or... Or, or insanely loud music playing in the background and background music is background music by the way if if you're if I have to turn it up to hear your voice over when you're doing a commentary over your background something's wrong so just keep that in mind when you put the music on there that that if you have annoying music or you have stuff that's that's loud too loud or too hard to hear people are gonna immediately leave your videos and that's that um, here and we're going to touch real briefly on a color corrector. Look, color correcting is a completely subjective thing, right? So your version of color correcting is going to be a lot different than what I like. I don't like the oversaturated stuff that most people do, um, but you know, again, completely personal preference. I'm going to show you what I do for for my commentaries. I'm going to throw that on there real quick. So. Uh, I can do it track wide. I personally, there's two different ways to do this, right? You can come in here to video effects. You can grab a color corrector, whatever it may be, and you can drag it onto an individual track. Um, that's something that that is completely up to you what you're going to do. Um, or you can just drag that on here to the whole track, and that's what I did here. So my track effects right here. I'm going to turn that back on. I just use the standard default. Sony color corrector which you can find um, right here just the default and I come over here and these are the settings that I use 1.4 for saturation 1.0 for gamma gain at 1.2 and offset at negative 0.8 now I'm gonna click on a few of these scenes here and you can see what this is gonna do I, you see right now you can tell that it's hazy and here we're going to get rid of that haze. We're going to bring out a little bit of that color, but it's not going to be so where it looks cartoony or, or you know, over oversaturated. Now, look at a couple of the other scenes here. Now, these are going to have to be adjusted for every different um, type of, of of level you're playing. This isn't going to work for everything, but this is typically a, like a middle of the road that I use because I'm not. I just want to bring that haze down, right? And you can see here I'm bringing a little bit of color out in the haze. Is, is deadening 
and the same thing here when I'm outside. It brightens everything up a little bit and it gets rid of that haze. Now if you like the haze then leave it there. I mean that's definitely your preference. So again this is a completely subjective thing that you're going to do. Now here's a biggie and this is a thing that, that a lot of people don't do um, that is a major thing when using Vegas. Right click on every clip that you have, go to properties, and take it off of smart resample and put it to disable resample. Big deal. That is going to get rid of a lot of the motion blur that you have, especially if you're playing on console. Same for every clip that you have before you render it out, disable resample. So um, we've covered covered all this. Now this is typically the whole setup I do. Now I want to show you something new, completely new to Vegas 11, which is going to be under options preferences and video and that is a GPU acceleration uh, I have another video completely going over this but this is where you enable it and basically what it does is it uses your GPU to do some of the rendering so it's it's very advantageous for people who are right on the edge of of you know having a difficult time with rendering or having long render times it does cut it down a bit uh, in certain circumstances, um, and I won't get into it, you can watch the other video I did, but it is advantageous to you in some circumstances. So, next thing we're going to do here is we're going to go to the actual render settings. Now we've got our clip, everything's, everything's ready to go. Now we're going to click here to render as. Now Vegas 11's got this huge set of files here of, of how to do it. I typically render when I'm rendering on YouTube a Windows Media Video uh, 11 file and so what I did is I created my own so I clicked on whatever the highest one here and then you go to customize template and we can we'll, we'll show you how to change that name I've got that as YouTube new so you can come up here and rename this and then click save and it'll save this template for future use and that's what I recommend you do because it'll, it'll instead of going through and and re-remembering or writing down these settings every time it's just gonna remember their settings so Go over the settings real quick. Audio, I got it on CBR. Windows Media Audio 9.2 at 192, 48 hertz, or 48 K hertz. Stereo AV and CBR for the attributes. Now video, the mode is going to be CBR. Format is going to be Windows Media Video 9. And image size is going to be def high definition, 1280 by 720. Keep your aspect ratio at 1.0 again with the same frame rate we were discussing earlier you always want this all of these settings to match what you set up in the beginning in your in your project that's super important uh, next thing we got here is bitrate now I recommend you enter something custom in here if you are on uh, a Haupog PVR put this at 13.5 million uh, or if you're recording at the highest level in the Halpog PVR, you want it to match your source. So uh, since this is primarily, I primarily record with my BMI shuttle. This is about what I want to work with my BMI shuttle. But the the Halpog needs to be at 13.5, and you can adjust your bit rate through your settings in your in your uh, your Halpog software. So make sure you do that there. And then that will be the end of this. Now, oh, I'm sorry, one more thing. Project, video rendering quality, you want it at best. Stereoscopic, just go ahead and leave that whatever it is for right now. And that is going to be the end of this tutorial on Vegas render settings. Feel free to leave comments down in the box um, or questions you may have, and I'll try and answer them as best as I can. Again, I'm, I don't claim to be a, a super big expert at this, but this is this is what I use and, and how I've gotten by over the last couple of years that I've been doing this. And Vegas 11, definitely want to take advantage of some of the new features that it has. I definitely recommend that everybody upgrades to it. It's it's a great a, a great product. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, throw that clip at the end of this video so you guys can see what it turned out as rendered. So. Anyways, thanks everybody for watching and don't forget to subscribe.